Romance of the Ranchos. Millions of barrels of oil, liquid gold. Beneath the surface of the earth of Southern California lie huge lakes of precious petroleum. At Santa Fe Springs, forests of gaunt steel derricks pencil the horizon as far as the eye can see. From those depths have come millions of barrels of oil and millions of dollars of wealth for Southern California. And yet, long before those derricks mushroomed into the sky, long before that dark pool brought Santa Fe Springs to the attention of the world, Long before the towns of Downey, Santa Fe Springs, Los Nietos, and Rivera came into being, this was a land of romance, of achievement, and drama. For this was once the great Rancho Santa Gertrudes, the domain of the Dones, seen for the romance of the ranchos. <laughs> Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles presents The Romance of the Ranchos, a weekly dramatization of the march of events in the Southland from the romantic days of the ranchos to the streamlined age of today. Tonight, our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, uncovers another fascinating story of events and people who helped to build Southern California. And here is our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham. Buenas noches, senoras y senores. Tonight, we're going to relive the story of the Rancho Santa Gertrudes, a story of romance and achievement selected from the vast files of the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles. Yes, Frank, it's the business of the Title Insurance and Trust Company to know the facts about land ownership. And since the story of the ownership of most of the land you and I and our listeners own and live on dates back more than a century and a half to the first grants made by the King of Spain, the title company's records must go back that far, too. They include the essential information about every one of the many different transfers of title to every square foot of land in this entire county, including, of course, the Rancho Santa Gertrudis, whose story you're going to tell us tonight. <laughs> Our story of the Rancho Santa Gertrudes takes us back through time to the year 1859. It was in that year that a crowd gathered on the steps of the Los Angeles courthouse to listen to the call of the auctioneer. The bid is 55. Anybody want to raise it? 60. Mr. Downey says 60. Who'll give me 65? Oh, come, come, gentlemen. 17,602 acres, the most fertile land in California. Why, it's worth twice as much. Maybe so, Sheriff, but I bid 60. Anybody want to raise that? Bid is 60. Nobody wants to raise it. It's going for 60. Sold. Mr. John G. Downey and Mr. James P. McFarland for $60,000. Well, you got a real bargain there, Mr. Downey. Yeah, perhaps you're right, Sheriff. What's it figure to? Oh, roughly about $3.40 an acre, I guess. <laughs> That's not cheap. Oh, it's the best farming land around here. You've got water from the San Gabriel River. You've yeah. Got... Poor carpenter didn't find it so profitable. Look. See those people walking down the street? You mean the ones all in black? Yes. They're in mourning. They're friends of Carpenter. And they're on their way to his funeral. Ashes to ashes. Dust to dust. Lovingly, his friends returned Lemuel Carpenter to the soil which he loved. Lemuel Carpenter one of the first Americans to set foot in California, one of the earliest of the California pioneers, was dead. And with him passed the first great era of achievement that made California what it is today. Let's go back still farther into history and allow Lemuel Carpenter's life to come before us from Rancho Santa Gertrudes. <laughs> Mr. 
great rancho of Los Nietos, granted to Manuel Nieto in 1784, had been partitioned among his children after his death. Now, in the early 1830s, Santa Gertrudes was the domain of his son's widow, Doña Josefa Coto. It was she who, each year at the Christmas season, was hostess to the countryside at a joyous siesta. Ah, Maria, it is so good to hear them having a good time. Laughing, singing, dancing. See, si, fiesta time is so wonderful. If we could only be as happy always. Dear Josefa, that is no way to talk. What will your guests think of your long face? Come, be gay. <laughs> my little Maria, do you think my sister should have a child as lovely as you? Ay, you're a great tonic for this old heart of mine. I am glad, dear Josefa, for you must be happier and gayer, and I shall help you to be. If I could only have you near me all of the time, my mm. child. That too might be arranged. Huh? You are not going back to Santa Barbara? See, si, but I would not. If you could find a suitable husband for me here. Aha, uh-huh. you little fox. Thinking of that already, eh? Uh, you are too young and far too beautiful for any man. You sound like Mama Sita when you say that. I am not too young, and what good is my beauty if it does not get me a husband? Oh, I suppose you have your eyes on some caballero? No, not exactly. Not exactly, hmm? Come, come, what do you mean by that? Well, Don Juan Temple has a young Americano staying with him. He's very handsome. Americano? Uh huh. Yes, I have heard of him. So, you have met him? No. But I saw him riding one day. So? And? See. Si. Just like that. You love him? Goodness, I do not know. Mm, well, you shall have a better chance to know very soon. Here is Don Juan now, and with him. The Americano? Si. Oh, dear Josefa, I'm frightened. Frightened? But I thought you wanted to meet him. See, si, but not yet, not now. Stop acting like a schoolgirl. Of course you shall meet him and charm him with your beauty. If you are to have a husband, you are a woman now. Act like one. Now stop blushing. Here he comes. Ah, Doña Josefa, Señorita Maria, buenas noches. It is a pleasure to be here. We are happy to have our good neighbors, Don Juan, and their friends. Oh, see, si. may I present Senor Lemuel Carpenter, who has just arrived from New Mexico. Doña Jose Facota. It's a pleasure, ma'am. Hmm. He is charming, eh, Maria? You are a welcome guest in my home, Senor Carpenter. And this is my niece, Maria de Los Angeles de Dominguez, Senor Carpenter. Buenas noches, Senor. I'm mighty glad to know you, miss. I, I've seen you riding. Eh? You too? I beg pardon, ma'am? I say, uh, you enjoy riding too, senor? Oh, of course. Well, you two will have much in common. You should get on well together. Very well, I'm sure. I should like nothing better. Might I presume to... Oh, that is... Well, I'd be mighty happy if you'd allow Senorita Maria to join me in the dancing, Doña Josefa. That is, if she would do me the honor of accepting. Well, speak up, child. What do you say? Gracias, senor. I would be most happy. Well, then, of course, go right ahead. Young people should be dancing. You'll excuse us then, Doña Jose. But, of course, run along. Enjoy yourselves. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> He's a nice young man. Very fine young fellow. You think he will stay? No, I cannot say. That depends. I think he will stay. Perhaps Tia Josefa can arrange it. <laughs> you are always the matchmaker, senora. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have my wish for success. I would feel safer with Senor Carpenter here. He's the kind of strong man we need. You have news? See, si. Juan Perez is building a house on Arroyo Hondo. On Arroyo Hondo? See, si. not 500 varas from your land. But that means he still claims title to my land. See, si, he does not give up easily. We must do something. We must drive him what off. What can we do, amiga mia? He's building on mission land. That's perfect right. We can only watch and wait and try to protect what is ours. See. Si. I suppose you are right. Ah, that is why I'm glad Senor Carpenter's come. Find a strong man on our side would be a protection. See, si, perhaps he can help. See, si, I... I believe he will. The romance of young Carpenter and Maria de los Angeles progressed slowly. Urged on by interested bystanders, especially Doña Josefa. But time passed quickly, and presently the day arrived when Maria was to start home to Santa Barbara. That morning she sat alone in the garden. <laughs> Senorita Maria! Senorita Maria! Oh, oh, Senor Carpenter. Senorita, I've been looking for you. I wanted to see you before you left. I am here. Oh, you. You've been crying. See, si, I have been crying. 
Oh, but you mustn't. Is it not my privilege to cry if I wish? Of course, but... Did not you ever see a girl cry before? Oh, yes, but... Uh... But am I so different from other girls? Why, no, I... Well, I mean... Why, yes, of course you are. Oh. Don't be offended. I can understand your crying. Naturally, you hate to leave this beautiful place oh, where you... Oh, you men are so stupid. I... I beg your pardon? I am not different from other girls. Why must you men always think that? Senorita, I've never seen you like this before. Then it's time you did. Now you know that I can be hateful and mean and and human, too. And now that you see, you are free to go. Without hasta la vista? Hasta la vista. (laughs) Go ahead, love. I am a stupid, silly girl. You have had your joke. Now now go away. Maria. See? Stop crying a minute. I want to tell you, I'm glad you're human. I'm glad you can cry and get angry, because I can dare hope that you could love a nobody like me. Dare to hope? Well, what do you suppose I was crying for? If you had not been so blind, you could have seen. (laughs) Maria, you're wonderful. I am not wonderful. I don't want to be wonderful. I just want to be taken in your arms and, and loved. Maria, you know I love you. But you will let me go home today, never to see you again. No. I want you to be my wife. I probably shouldn't ask. Shouldn't ask. For two whole months, I've been waiting. Doña Josefa has been waiting. The whole valley has been waiting for you to ask. But I, I suppose I've been pretty stupid. Yes, you have, Lemuel. And you needn't ask me to stay and be your wife. Not unless you kiss me before another minute goes by. <laughs> oh, Maria, you are wonderful. Come here. That's better. What is going on here, eh? Oh, Doña Josefa. I am interrupting something. See, si, Tia Josefa, you are. Doña Josefa, don't be angry. I will explain. Angry? Who's angry? I'm delighted. It has taken you long enough. When is the wedding to be? Well, I, we haven't decided. Soon, dear yet. Josefa. As soon as possible. Good. And now I shall have a fine, strong nephew to come live on my rancho and protect it for me. You will like that, eh? Well, I hadn't thought... It that... is settled, then. You shall have some land and build a home. But I hope you move faster in taking care of the rancho than you did in courting my little Maria. <laughs> Marriage took place post-haste, but the new ranchero settled on Santa Gertrudes. The American trait of building for a better life was strong in Lemuel Carpenter, and ambition and ingenuity carried him far. One day, Maria found him working in a small hut near the river. Lemuel? Lemuel? I'm here, Maria. Come in. Will you never leave this smelly place and come to the hacienda to eat? Leave now? Oh, but Maria, I have my first order. Doña Rafaela has ordered 20 cakes of soap. I must tend to it. Doña Rafaela can wait until tomorrow. You come inside and eat. Oh, but Maria... Lemuel Carpenter? Uh Uh-oh. Ma'am, when you get that tone of voice, I know it's time to give in. I'll be ready in just a minute. Phew! What ugly-looking stuff. Ugly? It's just boiling tallow and wild root and oak wood ash lye. It's going to be soap, Maria. But why do you want to make these... these smelly soap? Why? To to sell, of course. We'll make money. We'll sell soap to the whole country. We'll be rich. Do you realize this is the first factory in California? Factory? What's that? It's a place where you make things. Soap? See, si, soap. This is a soap factory. Ah, la jaboneria. That's what we'll call it. And believe me, people will look up to us. I'm the first manufacturer in California. Next, I'm going to start making brooms. You didn't realize you were marrying a big man, did you? Big or little, you had better eat your supper on time after this, or I'll... Uh, What'll you do? I won't let you kiss me. You won't, eh? No, <laughs> Come no, here, no. <laughs> There, young lady, that'll teach you that Lemuel Carpenter is one tough hombre when he wants to be. (laughs) Lemuel Carpenter's fortune rose with his habaneria and later his broom factory. But life on Santa Gertrudis was not all serene. Doña Josefa's fortune declined more and more as the years rolled on. And finally, she made appeal to the alcalde of nearby Los Angeles. Doña Josefa Cota? Si, Your Honor. You still wish to sell your land to Senor Carpenter? I see. I have been waiting for your word from the governor. Senor Carpenter's money is ready, and I need it badly. I cannot go on. Well, I am happy to give you good news, Senora. Oh? The governor has sent word for me to disregard the clause in your land which forbids you to sell the land. And I am authorized as notary to make the transfer to Senor Carpenter for you. Oh, gracias. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. Lemuel, do you hear? Santo get through. This will be ours. See, si, I hear, Maria. Dear Josefa, how can we thank you for this? Well, see, si, Doña Josefa, it's what we've dreamed about, owning Santa Gertrudis. 
We're both very happy. I hope that you will remain that way. Perhaps you will not understand when I say, I hope that this land will not cause you the sorrow it has me. I hope that it will not drag you down into poverty and misery. That deed to Rancho Santa Gertrudis by Senora Cota to Lemuel Carpenter was recorded and details of that record are today in the files of the Title Insurance and Trust Company in Los Angeles. So also are filed there details of other transfers, both before and after, from the first grant of Rancho Los Nietos, of which Santa Gertrudis was a part, to the last transfer of a 50-foot lot in Downey, which might have been yesterday or today. You see, if you were purchaser of that lot, and if the title insurance company did not maintain all these records, it would not be in a position to issue a policy of title insurance to protect your ownership. And without that insurance, there would exist the possibility that someday that property might be taken away from you without any recompense whatever because of some defect in the title which existed at the time you acquired the lot. A deed might have been forged or signed by a minor or a person legally incompetent. Or some previous owner might have borrowed money with the property as security and the claim of the lender or his heirs would be upheld in court tomorrow. And now back to our story and Frank Graham. Dona Josefa's warning to Carpenter began to take on new meaning in the days that followed. Drought spoiled the young rancher's crops. Competition hurt his soap and broom business. And then, darker events made their appearance on the horizon. Late one night, the young couple were aroused from sleep. Lemuel, is that a knock at the door? Huh? huh? Someone is knocking at the door. Oh, see, si, I'll go. Lemuel, be careful. It is late. Who could it be? Oh, don't worry. It's all right. I'm coming. I'm coming. Lemuel, may we come in? Don Juan. No more. I'm sorry to disturb you, but this man needs attention. Well, who is it? Don Emmanuel. What's happened? He was shot. In the back. By whom? One of Mitchell Torreno's soldiers. Mitchell Torreno? Here. Si. They're coming this way. You know what that means? Senor, they'll steal our cattle, rob and loot. Oh, come. We must tend this wound. Put him here. Oh, Maria, some water. Yeah. See you right away, Lemuel. Uh, this will do as a bandage. Lost a lot of blood. Meet your terrain, huh? We must stop them, Lemuel. The rancheros are organizing all over the valley. They're gathering. You mean... See, si, we must fight. But that's revolution. He's the governor. Many of his men are thieving, murdering scoundrels. See, si, they take what they want. They know no law. Here's the water, Lemuel. Oh, thank you, my dear. We must fight. This cannot go on. Meet your terrain, must go. Other Americanos have joined us. Are you with us? Lemuel. I must do my part, Maria. I'm with you, senores. <laughs> Lemuel Carpenter fought with the California Volunteers as they successfully defended their rights against the governor during those days of 1846. Santa Gertrudes became a meeting place and a refuge for them. Then, a year later, the ranch was to shelter a different army. And once again, Lemuel Carpenter faced a difficult decision. Lemuel Carpenter? Yes? Captain Strong of the United States Army. I'll have to ask you to peacefully surrender your arms. Yes. You'll have no objections if our scouts use your rancho as a base. I... But, Captain, these people are my friends. Well, you're an American, aren't you? Yes, I am an American. Well, I sympathize, Mr. Carpenter. Perhaps you'll realize this may be best for your friends, that California becomes a part of the United States. Yes, yes, I suppose so. Then you'll have no objections? No, I have no objections. Thank you. Good day. What does it mean, Lemuel? It means that California will become part of a great nation, Maria. It will grow and prosper, but... But what? People will come. Towns, cities will spring up. Land will be broken up. This rancher we love will go too, Maria. It is the beginning of the end. The beginning of the end of Rancho Santa Gertrudes. Carpenters saw it. All through the years, it had become harder and harder to hold the land. New problems arose every day. Drought. Water was scarce. Carpenter needed more water for his parched land. So he decided to divert part of the river. One day, as he worked on the project... All right, men. More dirt over here. Carpenter! 
Carpenter. Oh, good day. What brings you here? Carpenter, you realize what you're doing? You're ruining my land. You're trying to ruin me. Well, I've come to put a stop to it. Well, what are you talking about? I'm doing nothing of the kind. You're turning the water into your land. Turn the course of the river. What'll I do for water? My land will be ruined. Oh, you're wrong, sir. I'm not diverting the river, just part of it. I need water for irrigation. I'm just building the ditches. There'll be plenty for all of us. Oh, no, sir. Already the river is dry. My land is drying up. You're not even finished. But that's the point. When we finish the work, we won't have to divert so much of the water, and you'll have plenty. I won't listen to you. I'll have you stop, sir. But I, I can't... I'll have the law on you. I'll go to the courts. I'll have you stop. Oh, but look. All right, then. Go ahead. I'll fight you. I'll fight you if it takes every cent I have. Mr. Downey, I'll have to borrow more money. You better be careful, Lim. You're in pretty deep. I can't help it. My land is gone if I don't get money. Well, it may be gone anyway with this mortgage. Will you give me the money, Mr. Downey? Well, if you want it, I suppose I can, Lim, but I can't be responsible for what may happen. Brings you out here to Santa Gertrudis. Well, Lim, I have to talk to you about that money. I sure hate to worry you, but... Bad news? Yeah, I'm afraid so. Looks like I'll have to foreclose. It's getting worse and worse, you know, and has been for years. Looks like now my partner McFarland and I have more money tied up here than the place is worth. But if only the drought would... Yeah, that's what we hoped for last year, but... No, Lim, it's no good. Yes... I know you're right. I... Well, thanks for telling me beforehand anyway. I'm sorry, Lim. I know. It's all right. You'll be all right. You can get a fresh start now. And get out from under. And as for living here, you and your wife, well, I'm pretty sure that can be arranged. Thanks, Mr. Downey. But it wouldn't be the same. This place has meant a lot to us. I've lost it. I made a failure of my life. Oh, now, Lim, don't take it so hard. It's not your fault. How can I face Maria? How can I ever face her? Oh, uh, Lim. Lim, come back here. Lim! shock of losing the Rancho Santa Gertrudis was too much for Lemuel Carpenter, and he ended the life he believed to be a failure. With the death of Lemuel Carpenter came the end of an era in the growth of the land which was Rancho Santa Gertrudis. Now it began to have its part in the march of progress and achievement that swept through the Southland. Its owner, John G. Downey took a prominent part in the great events that followed. With his partner, James P. McFarland, he founded the first drugstore in Los Angeles, and later, its first bank. Then, as the Civil War broke over the nation, word came to Los Angeles. Governor Latham has resigned. Lieutenant Governor Downey takes office. Well, what do you know? John G. Downey is governor of California. Back from serving a term as governor of the new state, Downey subdivided the Rancho Santa Gertrudis, and soon the land boom swept the Southland. It's going for ten dollars an acre. I'll pay twelve. Fifteen. Twenty. Just as Lemuel Carpenter had predicted, people began to pour into Southern California. But now, the steaming iron horses multiplied their number a thousandfold. They're coming here by the train loads. And no wonder. The railroads are cutting rates to nothing. Yeah, a fare from Chicago to Los Angeles, one dollar. Including everything. Towns sprang up, villages expanded, fertile farmlands were cut up for town sites. Nothing was too good for the great country that was to be. The town of Downey was laid out on Rancho Santa Gertrudis and... Over a hundred families here already. Yes, and five stores. Why, it won't be long before Downey's the size of Los Angeles. <laughs> bigger. Well, we'll make that sleepy village look sick in no time. Yeah, maybe sooner. <laughs> and so the land which had once echoed with the fiestas of Doña Josefa and slumbered lazily under the warm southern sun, the Rancho Santa Gertrudis became the center of a thriving community. And as the years passed, it grew. But another great change was still in store for it. 
It was twilight one day in 1919 as two men walked through the orange groves near the health resort of Fulton Wells. This is a great place you have here, Doctor. Great place. Oh, yes, sir. Fulton Wells is known all over the country. Why, I've had people from New York come here just take my iron self a bath. Mm -hmm. By the way, what are those men doing over there? Oh, they're, <laughs> they're digging. Digging for oil, they say. Oil, huh? Well, I didn't know you had any around here. No, not as anyone else except those geologists. Well, they've been digging, scraping around here for years. Yes, sir. They first started in uh, 1865. Some company took a lease and tried it. And they didn't find any? <laughs> Nary a drop. Then the last few years, these fellas came along and they tried. Still no success. They've dug three wells ready. You think they give it up, what? <laughs> well, they're certainly persistent. Yeah, they sure are. What's that? I don't know. Those men are running away from that well. Holy jumping Jehoshaphat, look at that! <laughs> Oh, there's mud and water shooting a hundred feet in the air. Mud and water? Well, man, that's oil, oil. I knew it, I knew it. I told you there was oil here. Why, oh, we're rich. We'll all be rich. Oil, oil. Oil, an immense reservoir of liquid black gold. Now, Fulton Wells was no longer a mecca for those seeking its healing powers. Frantically, wells were bored, one after another brought in. Soon, 300 derricks laced the sky. Then another deeper pool was found, and within 30 days, 78 new wells were drilling. Today, the land which was once Lemuel Carpenter's Rancho Santa Gertrudes supports one of the world's great oil fields, Santa Fe Springs. And from this land have come almost 500 million barrels of petroleum worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Such is the romance of the ranchos. In a moment, Frank Graham will tell you a little about next week's story. Perhaps it's the story of the rancho in which your home is now located. For almost 50 years, Title Insurance and Trust Company has served the people of Southern California. Through those years, at the expenditure of millions of dollars, it has compiled complete title records, which enable it to offer a title protection and service not surpassed anywhere. To owner, buyer, lender, or borrower on real estate... Title Insurance and Trust Company offers protection against loss through defective titles. Because its title examiners can find necessary information in this great plant with a minimum of delay, it can provide this service quickly and at rates substantially lower than prevail in almost every other part of the United States. The Title Insurance and Trust Company presents Romance of the Ranchos for your enjoyment to acquaint you with the history and romance of the land where you may now live and as a means of acquainting you with the facts behind the title insurance policy which protects you as either purchaser or lender. What's the story for next week, Frank? Well, one of the big events of every year in Southern California is the great Los Angeles County Fair at Pomona, now in progress. So next week... We're going to relive the fascinating story of the Pomona Valley and Rancho San Jose. Until next week, then, this is your wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, saying, Hasta la vista, señoras y señores. The Romance of the Ranchos, featuring Frank Graham as the wandering vaquero, is brought to you each Sunday night at the same time by the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles. Bob Lamont speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.